Everyone can be an expert, but experts are a dime a dozen. A thought leader is someone who's known for knowing something. And a thought leader has people lining up to work with them, makes money like nobody's business, and is doing the kind of work that touches and feeds their soul. REC Experience presents Real Estate Entrepreneurship Leadership with your host, Jazz Takar. The REC Experience Podcast is now on air. Hey guys, so excited to have my friend, Nikki Ballou sitting with me today. How are you doing, buddy? It's an honor to be here, man. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I want to tell a quick little story. You and I crossed paths uh, originally through a mutual friend of ours. And then about a year, a year ago, almost, almost to the month, downstairs at the Starbucks, and I, I, I walked past you and I said to you, uh, hey, Nikki, what's going on? We're just, we, we, we're doing the, you know, the, the, the regular highs and stuff. And I may just mention to you that I was thinking about doing a podcast. And your, your, your eyes lit up because you said to me, Jazz, I've, I've been doing a podcast for a couple of years and I've done this many episodes. What do you need? And it blew me away because you were so open to tell me everything about the process. And this is coming from a guy who I had no idea how to set up a podcast. And you said, and you went on and you went to some techie stuff and I'm not the most techie guy, but you're like, Jazz, honestly, all you really need is a mic and you can actually do it into your phone. And how open you were with the information, you just don't see that a lot. And so I wanted to thank you. On tape as well as on <laughs> audio and say, um, because you really, you really got me over that hump because you were so open with your information. And I know that's who you've always been. So I want you to tell me, tell us, the listeners and the viewers, a little bit about yourself, man. I, I know, you know, you got the pipes out today. And so you, <laughs> you started, you started uh, in the training business. When I met you, 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 you were a personal trainer. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit more about yourself, man, Nikki. I'm an immigrant to Canada. My mom and dad uh, brought us here from Iran originally, and um, we're uh, ethnic Christians, and we are so grateful to live in this great country because Canada gives people like me, people like you, the opportunity. Doesn't matter what our background is, doesn't matter what our ethnicity or religion is, we have the opportunity here to be the best version of ourselves. And my mom and dad had a vision to allow this to be possible for their children. And they brought us here and they were both entrepreneurs. My, my mother is a real estate agent. Um, and Shout out to mom and dad. Yeah, absolutely. And my father's uh, proudest boast was that he helped feed 40 families plus ours. So growing up, being an entrepreneur was in our blood. But my dad and my mom also were vocal people out there. So they love to share and to give and to contribute. So that's been in me too. And I'm really into learning, reading, and growing. So last year I read 82 books. You know what I mean? You read 82, 82 books? 82 books. Now okay. listen, read. 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 This year so far, I've read 16. I'm in book 17. Today's January 25th. You devoured them. I, I'm in the books. Books are good. Let's just touch on that for a second. How do you make the time for that? Like, I go to bed early, I get up early, and I read early in the morning. Okay. So like this morning, I was up at 4.30, and I read from 4.30 till 6. Right? So that's... Um, it's part of what I did. And, and, and before I go to bed, I read a little too, but I usually fall asleep within like <laughs> yeah, two yeah, minutes. Yeah. I get in the bed, start reading. You don't know, 4.30 in the morning. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it, it, it's that. And I believe that as a human being, I was put here to, uh, to love, to grow, and to contribute. And every day, I write that down in my journal. You know, I... I to our I, listeners, uh, beautiful journal. I like, I like the color right, of it. Yeah. You could... Oh, yeah. So Tons of notes. So the intention every day is love, grow, and contribute, right? So, and then I talk about three things I'm proud of. I talk about 13 things I'm grateful for, nine things I love about other people, and three times I've shown courage. So I get this deep in myself, and then I go out and I teach this to people. 
to, to do this. So what has this done for you th- f- before we get to, to, to the other people, right? And, Tenfold and in my income, you know, um, helped me get rid of uh, a lot of the angst that I grew up with, pain and hurt, helped me just kind of journaling, helped me just work through it and to, uh, help me become a better messenger for my purpose okay. on the planet. So, yeah. So is that how the business started? What, with journaling? Well, no, not, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, like, now you built yourself up at a certain point, and it's, I want to get my word out there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, when I was a personal trainer and I was in the fitness field, I, I, I love working out. It's, it's good. But I just felt I was not even remotely tapping my potential. So our, our mutual friend, Simon, the late mm-hmm. great Simon, Jenny, yes. he would tell me, he said, Nikki, you know, you're, you're really good at what you do, but he said, don't be offended, but you're way too smart to do this. <laughs> and I'm like, crap, man, he's right. <laughs> you know, and um, <laughs> that was important because when the time came, uh, I, I went through a horrible life experience. I, I, my, um, my former wife decided she didn't want to be married to me anymore. And okay. that just sent me into a, a depression, a tailspin. My income fell from, you know, a couple hundred grand to five grand a year, like that. And I knew I needed a new path. And I was out at a business function and I saw a man deliver a talk and it just spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And I walked over to him and I said, I think I need to hire you to help me. And he said to me, okay, I charge $5,000 for five hours of my time. I get paid in advance. There are no refunds. There's no guarantees. And I'm like... That's all the money I made in the last 12 months. <laughs> if I didn't have family, I, I, I'd be on the street. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. that's, and I told him all that. And he said, I'm going to do you a favor. He said, I'm going to tell you what's going to help you get past this. I'm going to give you some free coaching. He said, right now you have an income problem. You have a resources problem. What you need to do to overcome it is become resourceful. You have to find a way to come up with this money. Because if you do, I will help you be the kind of man that will never be in this position again. But if you don't, you're going to stay stuck here for the rest of your life. And I said, damn, he's right. I said, okay, give me two days, 48 hours. You said, okay, 48 hours. Be resourceful. So I went and, you know, I was still a personal trainer then looking to get out of that. And I called some people I'd been talking to about working with me who had not given me a straight answer. And I said, look, here's the deal, guys. You're going to get the deal of the century if you say yes and pay me in full now, this deal expires when I hang up the phone. Are you in or are you out? And I was scared, right? Like, I mean, scared to say this, but determined. And so when I said this to these folks, they bought. And I had like $2,000. So I gave this guy $2,000. And he says, no, no, I need to get paid in advance. And I said, wait a minute, man. I'm giving you two now. I'll put it in writing. I'll pay you the rest within 30 days. And he's like hamming and hawing and trying to like say no. And I said, look, how many people have you given this speech to besides me? Oh, he said, a couple hundred, whatever. I said, besides me, how many of them came back with money? He said, zero. I said, take my money. He said, all right, I'll take your money. And within six months, I made six figures, you know. So my life was on an upward trajectory as a result of this adversity that I faced. I wrote a book. The one I gave you, Finish yes. Line Thinking, that book um, got me in front of a lot of audiences, real estate audiences primarily at the time, and I spoke for free, and then people said, hey, let's talk, and then I'd sign them up to be my coaching clients. I, I love the fact that you did that, right? That you were willing to put yourself out there, talk for free, and but I, I know you understood the long game where just by getting out there, you don't know who's sitting in the audience, right? And, you don't. And, and I'm sure you picked up a lot of business. And it's actually interesting because we do a lot of that as well from our, for, for, from our real estate business perspective where we give away all the content. We teach people how to buy their own home, sell their own home, invest on their own, knowing that most people just don't have the time to do it, but at least, and we're hoping that we're looked at as the authority and thinking through that in the long run, they'll come back to us. So now you started 
consulting with other entrepreneurs. I want, I, I, want, I, I want our listeners to go down that path, like hear about that story. How did that all come about? Well, when I wrote the book, I started to work with other entrepreneurs and I have had a background in working with high performers, right? So as a fitness uh, guy, I worked with uh, great Canadian Olympic gold medalist Donovan Bailey and Mark McCoy. Mm-hmm. Um, my better half has set three Guinness World Records for running 12 hours on a treadmill. Cool. Yeah. And um, first one when she was like 48. So it's pretty cool. And I had a lot of billionaire clients, a lot of top of their field clients. So I was a fitness trainer. So I understood the mindset of a top performer, of a winner, of a champion. And I brought that into the work I did with my book and into the coaching that I did. So whoever I took on, I was looking for a particular kind of person. I was looking for a person who wanted to be the best. I was looking for a person who wanted to crush it beyond what they believed was possible. And I was very fortunate that I found people like that. Now, most of them, not all, were broke, broke as broke could be. But they had a passion, a fire. And we lit that fire and I kicked their butt, man. You know, I got them to get out of their comfort zone. Yeah. And the only way that works is if I got out of my own comfort zone. You know what I mean? And so that's what I did. And a number of my clients were very successful. And then uh, my very last fitness client and I were talking um, one day after a workout. And I said, you know, I really like our our business conversations. You and I, we should join a mastermind together. Because I used to be part of a mastermind. And he just looked at me and said, that's a great idea. And then he was quiet. I'm like, what the hell is this guy thinking? He says, and we should charge for it. And we should call it the entrepreneur circle or e-circle for short. The next day he put up a a website. He said, okay, go out and sell. So I went and I got a dozen people to join this group. And we ran it for a couple of years. And we had a few of those guys add like five, $10 million a year to their business. It was crazy great. And we didn't have a way to differentiate ourselves into the marketplace. We were like a me too, like everybody else. Got it. So my part, my then partner said, okay, we need to do something to stand out. He had worked with some folks in Australia who had created an, a um, whole set of intellectual property around thought leadership. And they created an organization called Thought Leaders Business School. So we brought some of their material here and we started looking for people who wanted to be authorities or were authorities but wanted to step their game up and we created a a program initially based on what these guys in Australia had, but as time went on putting in more and more of our own unique content into it. And we started to work with people to help them establish themselves as a go-to authority because one of the folks who created that company is a man named Matt Church and he has a powerful distinction that he makes between an expert and a thought leader. He said an expert, someone who knows something, Everyone can be an expert, right? Clem can be an expert. You can be an expert. Laura can be an expert. I can be an expert. But experts are a dime a dozen. A thought leader is someone who's known for knowing something. And a thought leader has people lining up to work with them, makes money like nobody's business, and is doing the kind of work that touches and feeds their soul. While an expert can be struggling to scrape by. And this, my friend, was an aha moment for me because I started to get really interested in thought leadership. And I started to read all of Matt and Pete's books and do the course that they had. And um, I started to study the folks that I'd worked with who were top performers, what had them stand out. And then I decided we need to create a podcast where we interview the world's top thought leaders. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. We created a podcast. Initially, it had another name, but now it's called The Thought Leader Revolution. You can find it on iTunes. Just search it. iTunes, Stitcher, and thethoughtleaderrevolution.com. Okay. And we interviewed the smartest, most brilliant, most successful authorities and thought leaders on the planet. Some of our listeners, one of them in particular, called me and said, you're like the modern Napoleon Hill because you get to interview the best and I've interviewed Seth Godin. I've interviewed 1-800-Junk Brian Scudamore. I've interviewed George Ross, who was Donald Trump's right-hand man, the man who took him from broke to 10 billion. I've interviewed uh, Tony Hawk, skateboard guru. 
Charles. I've interviewed um, the man in motion, Rick Hansen. I've interviewed Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. I've interviewed the astronaut, Chris Hadfield. Yes. Um, I interviewed Dr. Warren Farrell, who is recognized as one of the top 100 thought leaders in any field in the world. He is the expert on the challenge facing our boys in 2019. Uh, and, and the list goes on and on and on. So the folks who listen to our show love listening to these folks' stories because when I interview them, I ask them to tell us their secrets, their hacks. So they tell people what they did. So basically, for free, you can get the secrets of the very smartest, most successful, most brilliant and effective thought leaders on the planet handed to you every week on Tuesday morning. And make it... Like it's, it cannot be easier than that. Now, you said something, and in, in, in the analogy I like to use, and what you hear a lot is that knowledge is power. But I think we both know that. Knowledge the, is not power. The use of knowledge is power. That's right. I actually have created a whole online course as part of what we offer to people through our thought leadership called um, Eight Hacks. To making, I didn't even know that, honestly. Eight <laughs> hacks to making a million a year in 12 months or less. Okay. Eight hacks to making, making a million, million a year in 12 okay. months or less. So okay. you have to pay for that course. That one we don't give away for free. But, but I, I, that's fine. But I'll give you some of the hacks. Okay, good. I'll give you some of the okay, hacks. Good. Okay, good. Exclusive. <laughs> so <laughs> hack number one is you have got to find a group of people that you love, that have a level 10 pain that you're motivated and have the expertise to offer a solution for. You cannot be all things to all people. That is death. Everybody thinks in real estate, hey, you know what? I'll, I, I can help you buy. I can help you sell. I can help you invest. I can do it in Toronto. I can do it in Newmarket. I can do it in Boston. I'll do it on Hire you. me. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And no. But I'll tell you, I know this guy, I forget his name right now, Jerry something or another. He only works on Bayview. Okay. Bayview, and, I, and he has been in the top 20 at Remax for 20 years. And he only works Bayview between Eglinton yeah. and Steele's either side. That's all he does. It makes sense. He becomes the Bayview guy. You know, it definitely makes sense. He's the Bayview guy. Become the thought leader. Yeah, leader. The authority. The go-to Expert. The whole thing about the riches are in the niches, right? Like there's, there, there. He you, is riches in niches, as my right. American friends say. <laughs> yeah. And actually, we are syndicated right across North America now to 150,000 listeners. So our American listeners are listening. <laughs> so new book just came out. I'm so excited. This book is the culmination of all the work we've been doing for thought leaders. It is the culmination of me being an absolutely voracious reader, okay? Because I was telling you when we were, you know, off camera that last year I read 82 books. So far this year, January 25th, 2019, I have read 16. I'm on book 17. To me, reading feeds the soul mm -hmm. and makes me smarter. And I, it's just good information. And because, like, you know, we have a, a, a TV outside this office right now that that's generally running like CP24. And, and, you know, we're in an office, right? So I can get why the boss is like that on. But I try to keep my eyes away from that stuff because it's generally all negative, negative, negative information where you're feeding yourself from 4.30 to 6, 6 o'clock in the morning positive stuff. It, it's going to come out. It's going to come out, 100%. So... All of this, and I've been a reader all my life, right? All of this inspired me to do something I've wanted to do since I was a kid. Since I was a kid, I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a writer who sold at least a million books in his lifetime. Like, before I died, that's going to happen. Going to happen. And I wrote this book, and this book was inspired by Ogmandino. Do you know Ogmandino? Yes. Greatest um, salesman in the world. Yes. That, that, that's, is that the, is the world's that's the best only book selling that I've, success yes, book of all of time. Yes. 20 plus million copies sold. And you, you must, as soon as we're done, go to Indigo, go to Ogmandino and order every single one of his books and make it your mission to read just Ogmandino for a while. I'm going to listen to it because I'm an audio book guy. Fine. Because I have an hour trip in and an hour trip Perfect. back out, get right? It, so get, that's get why. Audio. Okay. 
Right. Some of them aren't on audio. Sure. Just buy them. But that one honestly, is. yeah, that one is. That yeah. one is. And the greatest salesman in the world, part two is and whatnot. So do that. And Robin Sharma and his monk who sold his fire, they are fables, parables. And I have a hero in this book. The hero's name is Paulo. And he's married to a woman named Antonia. Okay. And Paulo and Antonia, they have a great marriage. She is successful in her own right. She's a doc. But he works for a big technology company, and he hates it. Okay. Hates it. Like, he's good at what he does. He loves the people he works with, but it's ripping his soul to shreds to be there. And many of our listeners are people who haven't yet taken the leap to entrepreneurship. Or even if they have, they have one foot back out in the door of working for somebody. And let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with working for somebody. There, there's absolutely a lot right with it. But totally if, that is, if that is what your path is, but if your path is to be your own boss and it's tearing you up inside not to be that person, you've got to take the thought leader's journey, which is what Paolo does. And Paolo comes and meets a guy, and yours truly, sure. and, uh, and, and my better half, Teresa. And we spend the book guiding Paolo through what it takes for him to take his expertise, get it out in a comprehensive, structured way so that he has thought leadership and he can go out there, find out who his ideal client is and go serve them. So that was our hack number one is yes. ideal client with a level 10 pain that you can solve, go serve them, okay? Number two, Charge large. Charge large. Charge large. I've heard you say this before, so I would really Most want you to elaborate people this. people undercharge. They charge by the hour. They charge based on what the competition is doing. That's wrong. That is actually a disservice to your client, to yourself and to your God. It's a disservice to your client because people love, love buying the best. For sure. Having the best. And let me tell you something. If I'm a relationship coach and you're a relationship coach and I charge $50 an hour and you charge $5,000 an hour and Clem's marriage was on the line, it was about to go belly up, who's he going to want to hire? For Me sure. or you? For sure. Me. Right? <laughs> right? Absolutely. Yes. That's the only way. And we love Clem's wife, by the way. I'm yeah, just absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure everybody hears that. And she 100%. Hears it. Yeah. She's, 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 she's fabulous. It's yes, a, yes. This is an example. It's, yes, it, yes. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's basically a demonstration that people like to pay for the best. Yeah. And you must do that because that way they get the full value of your solution. If you don't charge enough, they won't value it. They won't do the work. If you charge enough, they'll value it. They'll do the work. It's why it's still, there's people who buy Prada bags. There's Ferraris and, and, and Lamborghinis, Rolexes and Bretlings. Like all these things sell because it's, they're better. They are. <laughs> they are. And listen, there used to be a time where, especially for men, right? We weren't expected to buy a lot of stuff. We were expected to buy a very few things, but buy the best and take really, really good care of them. Today, it's a disposable society. People buy crap and they throw it out, and that's a mistake. But let's go back to this. When you charge large, people get the full value of your solution. Mm -hmm. So if you undercharge, you're robbing them of the full value of your solution. They're still going to be in pain. They're still going to suffer. Their problem will persist because they don't get the value of what you have to offer. So you're actually adding to the sum total of suffering by undercharging. Your business will suffer because you won't be getting paid what you're worth. And that means that if you don't get what you should get, you won't give what you should give. That's got to be one of your quotes that you're going to put on Instagram. If I love it. If you don't get what you should get, you won't give what you should give. So you have got to get what you should get. It is incumbent upon you. And your God, your God wants you to be successful to live the life of your dreams, to live your purpose, and to be abundant. And who are you to say no to your God? I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even go there, my friend. Who yeah, <laughs> for sure. Right? So that's hack number two. Hack number three. Hack number three is you need to follow a strategy of preeminence. 
you've got to be the best or one of the best in your field. If you don't know what you're talking about, don't go out there and put yourself out there as somebody who does. Like there's this 24 year old relationship coach who teaches, you know, men how not to mess up their marriages. Are you kidding me? Oh, the 21 year old on Instagram life coach. I like there's I, this guy, <laughs> he is all over social media. Yeah. He's got a shaved head. He's like yeah. 27 years old. Right. And he's like, I'm gonna help you make millions. I'm like, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not if you're gonna hire somebody to help you, if you're gonna be somebody who helps people make sure that it's all about you having the expertise and make sure you only hire people who have the expertise. Do not hire somebody who is good at hitting your pain points, but is crappy at solving your problem. Right. I mean, we generally all know our own pain points, so I don't need to hire somebody to bring that out. I need somebody to solve problems. You do, but the problem is these charlatan marketers, and that's what I call them, are geniuses at manipulating our pain points and telling us we need what they have to offer. And in the moment when your pain points are being messed with Mm -hmm. and you're feeling less than, you're vulnerable and you might make a mistake, you might spend money and buy. I had a client who spent $125,000. She was a woman, married woman, 56 years old, thought leader, spent $125,000 on various charlatan marketers, building her online funnels and SEO and Facebook ads, zero return, zero. Her husband said, honey, I love you, give me your credit card, we're going into the poorhouse if you keep this up. Right. And thankfully she met us, Mm. we helped her get clear on her genius, and her income went from nothing to 300K a year, which was wonderful for her. And now she's in a position to be able to make smart investment decisions without someone messing with her emotional pain point. What I really like about the mastermind concept that I know a lot of our younger listeners might not know of is you surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Mm. As the old saying goes, if you lie around with dogs all day, you might come up with, you're most likely going to come up with fleas. And so uh, if you surround yourself with the right people and you're continuously feeding good information in, as we mentioned before, you just, you're also going to, like, if you want to play, get better in tennis, I always use this analogy, right, Nikki, is that if you want to get better in tennis, play with somebody who's better than you because you'll slowly but surely up your own game. How do we get your book and when does it come out? You got us excited Book's out now. already. Okay. It's on Amazon, amazon.com, amazon.ca, um, you know, either way. And um, I have two versions of it out. One of it's just a black and white interior and the second's got a color interior that's a little nicer. I've got a couple graphs in there that are on cool. the cover. So those are both available. And uh, honestly, pick a copy up for yourself. Are pick you going to do an audio book though? Yeah, we're going to do you an better. audiobook. We're going to do an audiobook. It doesn't make sense if you just don't. I'm, I'm being no, honest. No, we'll do it. We'll do you it. have the mics. You have everything. We're going to do it. Okay. We're going to do it. And then you can... So, yeah, yeah. Can, so what yeah. we're going to do with that <laughs> is we're, we're, we're actually going to go and, um, uh, and make that available shortly. But this book is amazing. And honestly, you should buy the book and you should buy 10 copies for your friends, for your family, for your clients, for your business associates and give it to them because it's going to inspire them and it's going to help them get in touch with that best version of themselves. And that's what people need. And I wrote this book in order to make that happen in a bigger way. Well, guys, anyone who's listening, uh, just leave a comment and or review of this episode. And I will send out uh, uh, 10 copies uh, for the first reviews uh, as well and or any ratings that are done. I mean, obviously, Nikki, we're going to support you a lot more than that. But that's just for the guys who are listening. And for the viewers, the first 10 comments that are left, I'll also uh, uh, ship out uh, on YouTube, uh, from YouTube, any ratings and or reviews that are left, I'll ship out 10 copies to our viewers as well. How do we find you other than the book? How does somebody get to you, my friend? The best way, honestly, is to go to uh, eCircleAcademy.com. That's our website. Okay. Um, If someone is a person who thinks they have it in them to become a thought leader, if they've got expertise, but they haven't found a way to articulate it properly, or if they have articulated, but they're not really getting it out there, they haven't become known as the go-to thought leader, we've got a a button in the top right-hand corner of our website that says book your success call now. It's a free call Mm. and they'll have an opportunity to spend time 
with me right now. Over time, I'm going to need to bring other people to help Obviously. me. But right now, it's me. They're going to get Nikki Ballou mm -hmm. showing them a blueprint for how to go from being wherever the heck they are that they don't like to becoming that thought leader. And they, they should take advantage of that. That's As a beautiful they thing. Yeah. Thank you very much for this, Nikki. I really appreciate it, oh, man. It's been an honor to be here. Thank, Thank you, you for very having much, me. Buddy. Thank God bless you. you. Thank you. This has been the REC Experience Podcast with Jazz Takar, an REC Canada production. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the REC Experience. Please make sure to subscribe, like, and share. Click here to watch and experience more videos from REC.